Hi everyone, I was uh, perfectly happy in Brooklyn Heights, but I'm in Reykjavik and I can tell you the weather's not great. I'm a, I'm a sun kind of guy and this is... Anyway, we're going hiking in the northwest of Iceland and so that's why I'm in Reykjavik. I'm overdue for this week's video, so I thought I'd quickly record it. Um, market really kind of seems to be topping out, but I say that often. Uh, but, you know, there was a fascinating rotation this week between NVIDIA and everything that's been underperforming, essentially. And so, you know, I think people tend to believe that the bell's ringing, although strategists, as you know, are falling over themselves to increase their targets for the S&P 500. Uh, yesterday, the NASDAQ sold off, you know, more than a percent, and a trader was saying, oh my God, intraday, half down a percent. People are saying it's a buying opportunity. But he's given up trading the market. He's one of the top prop traders on Wall Street and he's backed off trading the market at all. So that's where we're at. On oil, uh, there was a false story about Chevron, Hess and the FTC delaying. That was a Bloomberg story. Again, actually, it's not the first time I've said on here that Bloomberg's had a false story. They, they've got to watch themselves a bit if they want their reputation to hold up. But that was actually just a head fake that got things going on Tuesday. And yesterday we had Rob West on our uh, happy hour, who's really a brilliant um, analyst on the entire energy transition, and I totally recommend his stuff. He's on Thunder Said Energy. He's got a lot of attention recently talking about AI, and he essentially is a believer in AI in terms of what it can do. And I, I've said this all along in terms of pharmaceuticals, you know, industrial processes. Yeah, it could be incredible what, what gets broken through once you can just put all your laboratory testing into a machine. It's a fascinating concept, and that's his ball case for AI. At the same time, he says that everyone trying to build these data centers wants the electricity immediately. And as we all know, US electricity um, spec capacity, uh, utilization rate, whatever you want to call it, I'm forgetting the correct electrical term, but you know what I mean. Um, capacity in the US is tight relative to demand, and it really isn't in position to uh, massively increased supply to data centers. So what he's seeing is, he said, a 70% increase in the cost of a CCGT. A CCGT is a combined cycle gas turbine that is gonna be the workhorse of additional power as fast as possible with the best economics, uh, with 100% um, availability, essentially. These things can run at you know, very high rate. That you can consider them base load, and that's what's needed for AI. So he had a couple of companies. One, you know, they're all sh shoves, shovels and picks companies. But you know, Siemens kept coming up. Quanta came up because so much of this capex that these guys are spending is going to be in construction companies. But it was all very interesting stuff. Okay, so that's Rob West uh, on AI being big, and there was a load of other stuff. Uh, clients can request the um, transcript and. Uh, actual video of that, that conversation between me and Rob. Elsewhere, uh, we're worried about refining, which is like, thanks for telling me, Paul, that refiners have traded off massively, but we knew that Q2 earnings estimates would come under a lot of downward pressure. The problem is that Q3 is not really working out either. And honestly, these companies are just doing too good a job. Uh, you know, they run too hard for the environment in terms of demand being down more than supply is up. And while exports are carrying the load, uh, they're sort of maxing out at the moment in terms of ultimately margins are falling. And that's sort of a negative start to Q3. The problem is Q3 is meant to be the best quarter. And so that's a concern for refining and that becomes a concern for the oil market. So I've got to be honest, we're struggling a bit here. Once we get through our bull call on oil into Labor Day, with what happens next, because there's plenty of evidence, and this week we had a, a profit warning from Delta Airlines, there's plenty of evidence that we're in a slowdown economically, and that's not gonna be positive for oil demand. So if the refiners are oversupplying the market right now, you know, it raises the question of what happens next. We've also been highlighting the Dango refinery, which everyone's been waiting for for years, is finally cranking up in Nigeria. All right, look, I, I'm in, I'm on vacation. I'm in uh, Reykjavik, as I told you. It's absolutely, well, it's not miserable weather for Reykjavik, but it's miserable weather. I was having a nice time in Brooklyn Heights. All right, I'll leave it there.